What is good, Greg Gang? We are out here at a creek, but this is not just any creek, okay? It's a creek in Kentucky, which is bad enough in and of itself, but this one on top of that is polluted. Wait, not polluted. What was the word I was looking for? Contaminated. You can see right here, we're on a bridge, so they put that there so that, you know what? When someone comes to fish here, they'll know what they're dealing with. It says that on both sides of the road. On this side, we actually got a pretty decent hole. Pretty deep. Not exactly sure how deep it is right there. I'd estimate maybe three and a half, four feet. Not bad for a little creek. You know what I mean? Did this water come from Chernobyl? No. On this side of the bridge, it's a little bit different. It's a whole lot more shallow. But the crazy thing about this creek is that, you know, I, I live by this creek, so I kind of come to it often, or I used to at least. The creek changes a lot because you can see it's a soft bottom. It's sandy down there. Pretty much every time a flood comes, the creek literally just redirects and picks a new route. I don't know, guys, but it works itself out every time somehow. Long story short, Contaminated Creek, our objective is to figure out what lives in this contaminated creek and what actually contaminated the creek to begin with. And in this video, we're going to attempt to answer all those questions. Unless, you know, a swamp donkey drags us in and kills us and we can't post the video. But we're going to hope that doesn't happen, okay? Two-headed catfish down there. We're about to find out. Probably. This is a holler boy pond. That's exactly what it is. But long story short, guys, we're going to be doing everything we can to figure out what the heck lives in that creek. First things first, we got a fishing pole. This one's going to be pretty basic. I'm using the Creek Bandit 5000. Just a little bitty rebel crawdaddy. If there's a big fish in there and he's ready to eat, this is the bait you want. If you look over there, we also have some minner traps because I've caught some really weird and rare minners. Or at least I thought they were minners in this creek, so we're going to set one of those. Then we have a cast net for things that won't go in a minner trap and won't bite my hook. And then right over here, we have some special meat bait. And we're going to be setting that out for the big ones, okay? Two-headed catfish, four-headed turtles, sea dolphins, whatever floats your goat, honestly. I want to see a sea dolphin. That's what I want to see, too. Creek dolphin. Contaminated creek dolphin. It's got four legs. Dolphins ain't even supposed to have legs. I that's wild. I'm telling you, dude, it's wicked around here. What about a turkey salmon? I've not caught one of those, but they're mean. Are they? <laughs> Do they take the form of Kanye or more of a fish? They'll take your fingers off. That's what form they'll be taking. Oh, I want to keep all my fingers. All right, let's see what we can do. We'll see if they want to bite. If they don't, that's okay. We have like four other options to try to catch these monsters. And then by the end of the video, we're going to literally trace this creek back and figure out why it's contaminated because it's actually a pretty good question. Usually this thing works pretty good. You just toss it in, twitch it a little bit, just like, a, you know, a crawdad fell out of the sky and then they come up and eat it. They're usually not smart enough to realize that crawdads don't fall from the sky, but crickets do. We may or may not. Oh, we just got a bite. You see that? Yeah. Oh, did you see that? Yeah. Did they see that? Yeah. That was a pretty big one. He comes swarfed on me, man. He was colorful, too. Probably messed up by the radioactivity. Oh, oh, he just hit it again. He just hit it again, dude. Well, they can see him pretty good, too. He's hanging out under that big rock, what he's doing. That I'm right just there. Gonna sit right there and twitch a little bit, see if he'll come up. Zoom in real tight on it. We'll see if I can get him to come up top water for it. Huh. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get him. He realized you planned, I'd say. I'd say so. He probably figured out he's a fake crawdaddy after two strikes and nothing happened. We'll see, though. He may not be that smart. Boys, I think they figured us out. Oh, yeah. They figured you out quick. Huh. I bet if you, like, threw a big old, like, net, like a like Spider-Man, they couldn't figure that one out. Dude, I think you're right. And we have a cast net. That's what I'm saying. The big Spider-Man's. <laughs> you know? Oh, <gasps> Dang it. Oh, missed him, man. He figured you out. All right, guys. Here's what we're going to do. You did catch that vine, though. Yeah, it's a pretty good catch. I'm going to keep fishing because I think I can eventually get it. When I catch him, I'm going to pull out that camera and show y'all because we don't want to waste our battery. You see him? Yeah, Kendall's got him a fish over here. Yeah, I'm going to bring him on up. He's not giant, but honestly, look at this thing. I've never seen this fish anywhere except this creek. And that's not a pumpkin seed. I know what a pumpkin seed looks like, but this is like a weird pumpkin seed but that has a big mouth oh this one's built different dude oh, calm down jeremy them legs are getting ready to pop out of there calm down jeremy but anyways check out the colors on him just disregard all the flowers and the rocks and sticks on him but long story short this dude's got bright orange tips on the wings or fins whatever you want to call it right. he's got a pretty long ear he might be a long ear i don't know he's got very colorful underbelly he's got blue right here and a big mouth which helps him eat bigger animals and crickets and bugs and stuff in a creek just like this you guys tell me if this is a species or if this is just a pumpkin seed gone radioactive, okay? And we're going to let Jeremiah go. See you, little Jeremiah. 
and that he's gonna go down there he's either gonna swim off or have a heart attack and get eaten by a turtle i mean it's just it's one of those it's a toss up at this point pretty sure he's good though because he definitely swam away have you ever seen a fish like that uh-uh i ain't either but i've caught a few in this creek and they're wicked dude they fight hard too do they yeah let's go grab the cast net we'll stink and yeet that thing out here and catch something that I don't want to buy we've seen some pretty big turtles in there before about the size of a 50 gallon barrel big washing machine wash tub in yeah. the water yeah cast net boys this thing turns you into spider-man pretty much but a lot less athletic kentucky version that don't matter we got trees on our side just purchased this cast net off amazon about three months ago and just haven't got to use it yet dude i used to be pretty good with a cast net used to be busting bust but now i'm just busting what's all them sinkers on it for i'll show you let me illustrate all right boys here's what we're working with apparently i got a six foot one see look it's a six foot cast net and I'm taller than it is, so say what you want to. Say what you want to. I'm an inch above it. Okay? Okay. Anyway, here's how a cast net works. You have the main cord. All right, it comes down and ties into these, which is, I don't know, eight or ten little strings. Those strings go through the net and attach down there to the bottom. So that, whenever you whip it out into a pancake, when you pull this, you pull the strings, which then pulls those together and kind of capulates everything. Does that make any sense at all? That's a complex design. Yeah, kinda. It's only been around for thousands and thousands of years. So yeah, it's pretty new modern technology. See if I remember how to do this one time. Let's see what we're working with. Looks like you're getting ready to get on jet ski with the armband or something. Looks like it, but this is a bad jet ski. Back for the fish. So first thing I gotta do this, and then I gotta do this again. Now I think I'll literally just whip it out. So watch this. Here we go. You ready for this or no? <laughs> Now that wasn't a bad throw at all. You missed that. That covered up about half the thing. Now I'll just pull it, and I should pull in whatever this thing fell on top of, if anything. Now, looks like we didn't do too hot. We didn't get any... No, we actually did. We got one. See? I like how the fish are just chilling in there like, well... Oh, did I get two? No, that one's a leaf. Still good catch, though. And then just pull it up, shake everything out. These bigger nets are a little bit more complicated, but I'll just pull this guy through and check him out. I don't know what that is. I mean, I guess he might be a shiner. That's a salmon. But, like, what's a shiner doing here? Dang. All these fish really like hitting the blacktop, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you comment below what that thing is. Because I've not seen many of those either, especially in a creek in the middle of nowhere. But, uh, yeah, I'll let him go because I ain't got really got much to do with him. See you, Ricardo. We'll just do the same thing again, boys. That was a bad throw. This one's also way bigger than I expected it to be. I thought I was getting a four-foot net. And somehow I come out here with a six footer, which is as big as I am, which is kind of hard to throw. Does everybody still think you're only five six? I don't know. Oh, you got one. Really? Yeah. Dang, dude, that's a big one. Oh, it's a bass. We caught a large mouth bass. Big mouth bass, boys. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when we come for you? <laughs> anyway, he's actually not a big mouth bass. He's actually a spotted bass, aka Kentucky bass. I know he's a Kentucky bass because he has spotted lateral lines coming right down here on his belly. Also, no, it's a spotted bass because if you look to where his jaw comes back, it does not go past his eye right here. It's in front of his eye. And I know he is not a small mouth bass because he has a rough patch on his tongue and his eyes are red that is a few telltale signs of a spotted kentucky bass so far boys we ain't found nothing crazy i will say the skeeters right here in this location are crazy all right you ready this is gonna be a good catch get ready for it okay yeah yeah you ready yep see it wasn't bad but it's a little bit too big for this creek and it smacked the bridge it did indeed smack the bridge what in the world I catch? This is a pretty good one, dude. Big one, son. Big one. What is that, a stick bass? Looks like it. Tr -tr 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 tree pounder. Nice one. I'm gonna toss this thing one more time, then we're gonna start setting out the traps. Adam told me there's two pacabras in this creek. I don't know. Hopefully we'll find out. I don't think Adam would lie, would he? No. That's what I thought. That was pretty good. We did not get him. What about that? Shame, ain't it? A little bit. It's okay, though. Go grab us the mentor traps and the bread. The bread like money or bread? No, the bread. 
Right. <coughs> How many you want? All of them? Yeah. All right. There's some inner traps. I think that one's a bigger one. That's a good one. This one's got a big tether on it. What's that for? Hooking to the bank? Yep. Nice. Tell you what, these skeeters are rough. They've been biting my leg all day for the past 20 minutes. Put that back. Now our cast net is up and ready to be used whenever we want. Now what we're going to be doing is setting out some inner traps. Because I like traps because traps work. Traps will fish when you're not fishing. Yes. Looks like we got two traps here. Both of them with tiny holes. But don't let these tiny holes fool you because we can still catch some pretty crazy looking stuff out of these. Start off with this. You men are trap an expert. I am. So you should be good with these traps for fishing in your trade. All right, now my favorite bait of choice is just standard white bread. Nothing special, something light, nothing too heavy. I'll just get me a big pieces, rip them up and drop them in like that. Now that ought to be way more than they need. But best case scenario, there's an absolute ton of them in here and we need more bread than we expect. So I'm just gonna go with that. All right, but uh, yeah, that should be good. What we're gonna do is basically just drop it off the bridge right here and see what happens. We need somewhere with decently deep water though. All right, so I got this little deep little pocket right here that runs through. I can either set it right down here under the bridge or right over there i think i'm gonna go under the bridge because we got two traps i'm gonna try to swing it under the bridge watch this got some little science action going on all right now the minor trap is officially somewhere under the bridge where we cannot see bet that should be perfect can. honestly huh i said i bet the fish can that's exactly right anyways that should be perfect we will tie this up and then we'll set the other trap and we'll come back here at the end of the day and see what we got we gotta catch something i think we will there's a lot of things in this creek to not catch anything now for this other trap i think i'm gonna set it on down the creek so before we do that we're gonna go ahead and set one of the big meat traps now for the meat traps we're using chicken breast and we're using bank line and some big old hooks that's all we're using and so you may be saying kg where are you going to set these where are you going to tie them up at i'm literally just going to tie them to the bridge put some bait on that hook and throw that thing out there in the middle so that maybe a turtle or whatever wants to can find it. i'm not going to go super hardcore i'm just going to straight up tie it right here to the bridge and that should do fine i hear a holler boy i do too i also hear holler boy coming down the road that's what i'm saying yeah he's on to us what i do with the hooks right here okay grab me one There we go. Now, if we get too big of an animal in here, it could snap this line, but this line's 70 pounds, so. I mean, it ain't gonna be easy to snap it, but a big one can absolutely snap this. A big one can also snap the hook off, and a big one can also straighten the hook, so. Anything's possible here. Yeah, so we don't exactly know what we're dealing with here. Now let's get the bait and we should be ready to go. I like chicken breast for bait because one, the fish like it. Two, stays on the hook pretty good. And three, it's not nasty because it's just chicken. That right there should be perfect for whatever we're trying to catch. Oh yeah. Come in here, grab my hook. Oh, the hooks are sharp. Ow. Hook it on just like that. Now that shouldn't be falling off the hook for no reason. And then I'm just going to give it the whippy dicky right here. Boom. It's out there in the middle. And if there's a turtle in there or if there's a turtle downstream, he's going to come on around and eat it. And good gobble. Yeah. Anyways, long story short, here's the plan from here. Me and Ethan, hello Bumblebee. Me and Ethan's gonna go over there on down the creek, on up the creek, set out that other minor trap and about three or four more big bait lines. And then from there, we're gonna head to the house, sight in my new deer gun for a little bit, and then come back down. So the next thing you guys are gonna be seeing is us shooting some guns. So hang in there, because at the end of the day, we're gonna come back, check the traps, and then trace this creek up and see where in the world it starts and see why it's polluted. Seeing at the house. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, guys, we're back at the house now, and I said I was gonna be sighting in my deer gun and uh this is an ak but i am going to actually try deer hunt with it we just got white tail deer so like it's not going to take that much to take them down i'll show you the bullets that the ak actually shoots right here come check these out they're 7.62 by 39 and um i'll probably get some different ones to actually deer hunt with but that's pretty much the cartridge itself it's a 30 caliber bullet roughly 120 grains and it's moving i don't know 2200 feet per second. plenty fast enough especially for short range now in one of the previous videos you saw me use this ak but it looked a little bit different than it does now not a lot different but a little bit different number one i done this a little homemade cheek riser i done that out of like horse tape and a little bit of foam that way it can raise my cheek up to be able to look through the sights the way i want to and have a good cheek wheel also switched out the sight i did have a three power sight on it but i actually switched out to a one by six it's a lot lower 
and I got it on some low profile rings, so it's really low and it works really good for me. Plus with hunting, I want to be able to zoom in so that I can better identify my target. Also, I have a 10 round mag here. This ain't nothing special, but it's just legal for hunting. You're not allowed to hunt with a 30 round mag, or at least for deer around here. But I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's just go ahead and sight it in. I got some targets out there and we're just going to try to get it sighted in today. So, all right, air pro on, you ready? Yeah. I'm just going to shoot two shots, then we'll go up and look at it. We're at 110 yards. Let's go see what we can do. I don't know how it shot. <laughs> All right, guys, so we went up, checked the target. It actually took us like 10 minutes because I was shooting like six foot off, so I had to go up closer. We didn't film that, though. Long story short, I think we got it sighted in. I'm going to put a three-shot group on it, and I've already shot one. So here's my next two shots, and we'll see how tight this three-shot group is. All right, let's go see. All right, so I was aiming at the P, and I went one, two, and three. So I'll take the average of this group. I need to move it over like maybe one or two clicks more. I'm just gonna move it one click over, and then I should be able to start dinging some targets, and you know, we'll see how we do that. I think we should be pretty on. Here's the thing though, I'm not gonna hunt with that exact ammo. I'm gonna get some higher quality, better expanding ammo for deer. So uh, regardless how tight I get it sighted in with these bullets, I'm gonna have to come back and re it in right before deer season anyhow. Which listen, we got until like the middle of November, so we got some time. <laughs> Adjustments have been made. I should be able to ding these targets, no problem. Here we go though, we'll see. Dinged it. Dinged it. That's all we got. That's all the ammo we got. If I had to, I could definitely kill a deer hitting an 8-inch plate, no matter where I hit the 8-inch plate. But I'm really happy that, from what I can tell, we're within a group about that big. And honestly, this cheap ammo... Well, used to be cheap. That surprised the heck out of me seeing that down there. Yeah, that's really cheap ammo. Russian ammo, mass produced, low quality, steel case. And it shot really good. Like, that's a pretty solid group. Of course, the gun's pretty good, and of course, the shooter's even better, but still surprised by the ammo. Yeah, for real. Wasn't bad. Now let's go check up on the emus. See how they're doing. Here, Scott, 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 Scott. All right, guys, if you do not know, these are emus. They're the second largest bird in the world, but these right here are not full grown. They'll get six foot, so. They get pretty tall, just saying. Listen, here's the thing, guys. If you didn't see the video where we got these, it's this video right here. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video, so if you've not seen that, you definitely need to go watch that. You still got your battle scar from Scott. Yeah, he, uh, he got me, but y'all have to see the video to see how. They go ham, dude, and they run up to like 35 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, in that video, I told you guys to pick out a name for them, and I got a lot of good names, but we ended up naming them Scott. This one's the male, and his name's Scott. What's the other one's name? Her name is also Scott, so their name's Scott and Scott. So yeah, guys, we're gonna let time take a little bit more. Then we're actually gonna go back down to the bridge and see what we cut. Hey, also comment what kind of animal should we get next? Because we have attack emus. Should we get an attack peacock? I don't know, let me know. All right, guys, we're back at the contaminated creek. Here's the thing. We didn't come back yesterday. I mean, I did come back yesterday evening, but nothing was here. So I just rebaited. Didn't check the minor traps. Wanted to let them sit overnight. And I also set one more minor trap. So let's check it right here. Also, as for the meat line, I'm about positive we have something on it. So we're just going to wait until the end to check that. I mean, it's sitting there twitching every other second. But anyways, let's check the first minor trap. There's some pretty rare species of minors in here. And it's not the ones we saw yesterday. I don't know if I got any of them, but we'll find out right here. Um, this is a very surprising, but I don't... Okay, we got a few, but I don't think we have any of the rare ones. They're little ones. Yeah, they're baby tiny ones. Which is weird because you can see them all over the place usually. The yeah. minors. Here, you can look at them right there. That's, that's the only ones we got. They're just pretty shiners. standard, yeah, pretty basic minors. They're actually the most popular minors. So it's nothing special at all there. That's okay though. I'm gonna just dump these back because I don't really have a reason to keep them. And I don't have a pull pond yet. Nice. Nice. All right, we'll set this one down right there. Let's check this other one. And then we got one more minor trap right down the road, little piece. Oh yeah, we got a bunch in here. Hopefully we got some of the rare ones. Yeah, they're, those are a lot bigger too. These are a lot bigger. These are good for bait. But once again, I don't think we got any of the rare ones in here. Those are just regular like chubs. Yeah, I'm looking for like some darters in here. What's the difference in a darter and a chub? Oh, you'll see, dude. Are they quick? I think so, but like they're like camouflage. You got tiger straps on them. These are all pretty basic manner, so nothing super special on these either. That's what we got there. I'm gonna just let these dudes go as well so far contaminated creek we have a river monster which we've not pulled up yet and these little shiner looking chub minnows i don't know 
Okay. And we're getting shot at. Somebody's getting a good squirrel hunt in this morning. I got two meat lines over there and another minute trap. I got boots on. Ethan don't. Looks like I'm going in solo. Hey. Huh? See, man. We'll see what we can do. But yeah, guys, this is what y'all didn't see yesterday is whenever I went to set these other lines I did off camera. I kind of got to walk through this thick stuff. The worst part isn't necessarily snakes or anything like that, but it's just that some of the grass has like spikes on it and it'll rip your leg up if you walk across it the wrong way. So yeah, that's not fun. Let's see, where'd I set that trap? Oh, here we go. Here's what the creek looks like on up here. I set my minor trap right down there in that little hole right there. And then right there we got a 50 gallon drum. And then on down there we have a car. So that's awesome. Oh yeah, we got some minors in here. Big minor trapping, son. We got any rares in here? Huh? Huh? We got any rares in here? No, but we got big ones. These minors are actually just bluegill, my boy. We also got crawdaddy. I don't know if y'all seen that or not. Big one, too. Let me grab this crawdaddy for y'all to see this. These are actually very common in this creek and pretty much any creek, but dude, check out the claws on that, dude. Pretty big. Not hardly big enough to eat, but definitely big enough to, I don't know, chop a minner's head off and eat it. See you, bub. But yeah, I'm gonna just let them go. And now, I got these two big meat lines right on down the creek a little bit. I'll head over there and we'll check them. Here's our first line. I don't think there's anything on it. And, uh, there's not. There's another really deep hole right up here. And I set one on it. So let's go on, wade through this creek. We'll get up there and check it, my boys. What is that? Yo, what in the world did I just stumble upon? <laughs> I was like, oh dang, there's a dead fish. Wait, what is that? Dude, what is that? That ain't no crawl daddy. I, that ain't no crawl daddy. I know that. Some little dead fish must have just died for some random reasons. Then this beetle looking thing got a hold of it. Boys, I, I'd, I'd hate to poke it, but... It's like, dude, what are you doing here? What even is you, my guy? My other bush hook is right here. In this big old hole of water, there's a car over there. Let me check it real quick. I don't think we got anything on this one because I can see the hook right here. What I am going to do is literally take them all down, though, since I'm done here. I don't want to leave strings hanging everywhere and hooks. So. I'm going to take these down, make my way downtown walking fast, and then we'll catch up with Ethan and see what he got down there. All right, here we go, boys. We're going to pull him in. Oh, he's over there on the bank. It is a turtle. He's not the giant one, and he's not a massive one, but he is a turtle. And he doesn't seem to be fighting that much. He's kind of, he's almost like a little pet turtle. I'm telling you guys though, I know there's big ones in here. I've seen them. But radioactive turtle, check the grass. Ooh, now he's starting to get me. Check just the grass and moss growing on his back. Like that's literally like pond grass. Just growing on his back. I wonder if he'll bite this. Oh, Ooh, yeah. he got your croc, dude. You better watch out now. Imagine if that was my finger. Nevertheless though, we do have a nice little turtle. I wouldn't call him nice. Yeah, he's definitely not nice. But he is a turtle. Yes. And he is little. So now we've seen what's in here. We got those weird looking minnows. We got a turtle. I know there's catfish, but I don't know if we're going to be able to catch catfish. Now we need to track this creek back and figure out why it's polluted in the first place. Now I actually know where this creek goes with the help of Google Maps, of course. And we're actually going to lead it back to the exact spot where the water comes out. So I'm actually interested in this myself. Here, let me grab the bucket. We'll put this guy in it and we'll put him up and then we'll go check out why in the world this creek's polluted. Oh, don't, don't you call me. He gets you again. Yeah, check that out, dude. Dude, people don't think about their claws, but like their claws are actually pretty sharp. All right, boys, let's head on back. Actually, I'm gonna cut our line loose because I don't want to leave it on the bridge, obviously. But after that, we heading on the Defender. That right there is why it's contaminated the coal. So what that does is that since this is an old coal mine, there's a lot of exposed coal. So whenever it rains, the water goes into the ground and then comes out of the ground through the coal because, you know, we kind of split the mountain open. So now the water comes out through the coal and coal is not naturally meant to be on the outside of a mountain. So when water passes over the coal and just comes straight out of, out of the mountain, it's kind of messed up. And so what they do to try to fix that is build ponds like these so that the water can drain out of the mine into the pond and then just sit here for a little while and then slowly drain out into the creek which is where we was down there fishing and we caught this turtle anyway so the creek way down there where we was fishing at yes it is definitely contaminated but this pond is even more contaminated now you may be saying well kendall dude why are you throwing a turtle in there if it's that contaminated well it's not contaminated for a turtle maybe for a little minner or something but for frogs snakes turtles stuff like that they don't really have a problem with it because they're pretty tough anyhow we'll let this turtle go all right there he goes 
And of course the battery died as soon as I turned out the turtle, but he swam off perfectly and what I was saying is that if the turtle doesn't like it here, turtles are pretty crazy creatures. He'll literally just pack up and start heading out the mountain. He'll figure it out himself. But anyways, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you're not already. If you'd like to buy some merch, any merch at all from kindlegrade1.com slash shop or first link in the description, use promo code TURTLE10, all caps. That's going to get you 10% off anything on the website, guys. But it's only good for three days. Once again, TURTLE10, all caps. KendallGrade1.com slash shop or the first link in the description. If you want to watch a really old video at that same creek, click right over here or right over here for all of my fishing videos. Mm -hmm.